Yeah, this video is not about this wheel or wheel with brakes. But I figured I'd get something pretty for an opening video clip that'll hopefully be the thumbnail because I'm too lazy to edit that stuff. This is just an update of what I got done today and future plans for this thing, or at least this year plans. Um, today I did just electrical work mainly and tested some more fuel lines. I think that's about all I got done. I did make this list just now of kind of an order of operations of what I'm going to try to work on. As you see, it's mainly just finishing up what I've been working on already. And then I'll put this stuff at the bottom as more towards the later end stuff and I just left a gap because I have a feeling there's going to be more stuff that I forgot to put on there. So anyways, on to today. By the way, if anyone plans on doing some electrical work and wants to go for some high end or some uh, very nice looking stuff, check these guys out. They make this fancy bulkhead over here. This is a Dolch Connect Deutsch connector, like uh, I don't think it's mil spec per se. Um, I don't remember what the Deutsch connector model number is of these, but they have this fancy line right here on the top and a line over here. And it just shows you how to align it. And there's your layout. It has four 12 gauge, a bunch of 16s, and then those little bitty ones around the perimeter are 20 gauge pins. It is a 29 pin connector. Another thing I did today was this here. And the reason I did that was because of a mistake made. But it actually works out because I needed to plug this hole and it comes out right here from my brake switch nicely. I probably should have heat shrink those black so it matched just everything else in the engine bay but I wanted to indicate that they are actually hot. So it's not a ground trigger. That is a hot feed to the brake lights. Now, um, onto the mistake made. So it goes with a saying, more is better. I got this 29 pin and I kind of guessed out or drew out roughly what I was needing to feed into the engine bay. And when I did it, I assumed, or I didn't really assume, but I figured 29 pins was plenty enough to do everything I needed to do to just get into the engine bay. If you're planning on doing EFI, now if you're a carburetor, it's probably perfectly fine, no issues. If you're doing EFI, get their double bulkhead, get two of these 29 pin connectors probably because one of the things I already had to do was put the hyper spark inside of my dash or under my dash. It's mounted on the back side right here. I showed it in a previous video, but this is it. I've got little rubber bush, uh, little rubber bushings or bumpers, whatever installed there, and it's mounted right there. This hole will get plugged. Um, it's not gonna have an antenna, at least not the normal fender antenna. But anyways, the, the hyper spark, to get to a rear mount battery. If you have a front mount battery, it's probably also not a problem to, with 29 pins. But with trunk mount battery and EFI, you send a lot of stuff through. Um, your Holly, or whatever your EFI main feed is gonna be big wired, it's gonna be at least 12. The Holly Sniper EFI has like a built on fuel relay, which is part of the reason why it needs such a large wire. I'm not using it, I'm using my rear fuel relays. So I'm just saying it's using it as the signal wire. So I don't need as big of a wire for the feed. So I'm using two 12 gauge because they tell you to run the positive and negative directly to the battery. So two of the 12s get ate up by that. Uh, the hyper spark needed to go up to a 10 gauge wire to make the trip to the trunk. The biggest this thing does is 12. So unless you're joining pins and splicing them together to carry the load, you're gonna have to route it differently. And that's what I did. Mounted it on the dash, um, routing it through the door sill. Actually, right now it's ran up and through the this roof pillar, going across there and down. I'm probably gonna pull that out. I'm gonna use that channel for speaker wire. 
I do still need to mount my coil in the engine bay, but the reason why EFI you need more is one, for the built-in injectors, the, the ECU that's in it, the feed. Um, if you've got injectors, you're gonna have to feed those. If you're mounting an ECU inside the car, you're gonna have to ring, run power wires through and trigger wires for the injectors. But not to mention, the Hollies have a bunch of input and output options. So all my sensors and whatnot have to run through this bulkhead. But I have a AC kill switch or cutoff switch that can be triggered through the Holly for wide open throttle. You can also use wire in safeties. So if like my oil pressure drops below a certain amount, it'll kill ignition. Uh, they have oil pressure safety switches you can get that are like actually plug in or screw in to an MPT. There's no need for it. I have a stepper motor oil pressure sender, which is down here. I'm gonna splice my signal wire, feed it to one of the inputs of the Holly, and it'll work as an ignition kill safety. You can also set it up to kill the fuel pump if you're, if you start getting fuel starved, you can set it up to where it monitors the injectors, um, duty cycle, I was blanking, and set it up to where if their duty cycle is too high, meaning they're pretty much triggered wide open because they're not getting enough, the engine's not getting enough fuel, it'll kill, you can kill spark. So you can keep from hitting a lean situation. More of an issue with boosted apps, but not gonna go into it anymore. You, you need more than you expect. So do what I didn't do, get the double bulkhead, it costs more, you'll, if nothing else, it sits there like that in the engine bay. Or you can take the plug end off. He sells caps that, that go over it. So nothing else, install it for future. I'm gonna have to go back, buy another one and drill another hole and remount it even though it's already nice and done. I'm hoping I can make do because I ran out, but I'm thinking the only things that I really need right now were one of that brake switch, because I'm out right now. I've, I've filled up the sheet with everything that's currently gonna be running through it, and I have like two 20 gauge pins left over. That was an actual positive. I could have rigged that up to where it was triggering a relay, I guess, and carried over smaller wire and gone through the bulkhead, but right now it's ate up and I haven't even rigged up any of my transmission stuff. So like my reverse switch, my neutral safety switch, none of that's gonna come through. Um, I'm probably gonna just drive the car without a reverse lights for the time being. So the car's not gonna be on the road too much. And in the instance where I'm backing up, if the reverse lights are what's needed, then I don't know what to say because the car's gonna be obnoxiously loud for the time being. Um, the other thing I did, I tested out my fuel lines. All of them test fine. Um, this return line had a very slow leak. I was losing like 10 PSI a day it's not gonna really be pressurized, so I'm not worried about it. Uh, and I've narrowed it down to being the braided one underneath the car, the hump. So I'm not gonna worry with it unless I start seeing fuel leak or something, but I don't think it's gonna be a problem. The pressured side is the whole run now and holding pressure. Uh, I don't know if I had a loose fitting before or what, but everything's, everything's holding pressure now. It's all this whole pressure length up to the end of the hard line where it'll run up to the sniper. So the other things that got done were these. So like I said, the Holly stuff, they wanted to run direct the battery. So I have one for the HyperSpark, one for the sniper EFI. These are my wires coming back to feed those. I'm going to run one to one, one to the other one, and then branch them off separate to the battery. So they each have their own circuit and these are just 40 amp resettable breakers or auto resettable breakers, I think. I think they're auto resetting. But anyways, I got those installed for that so they stay separate. I uh, started doing my relays. These are open barrel style terminals that use this style crimp. If anyone knows a good pair of crimps for these like Metropack style, see if I can get the focus. That style, I have these little cheapo pair that seem to actually be fairly good for the time being, for kind of a mix. And I have 
these. And right now I'm having to use both of them because one of them does the back side of it that crimps onto the insulation. Here's the, the type of terminal it is. The other one crimps the wire. And it doesn't seem like the wire is getting crimped as good as it should be using either one of these. It's almost like the little point in the middle needs to be larger or it needs to be able to close tighter. Like C is the smallest one it'll fit in without getting jammed and stuck in place. But it's like it doesn't crimp it down tight enough or something. But I'm making do. If anyone knows a good pair of those, I'll spend the money and buy them because I need to do several more of these. My headlight switch, my washer motor, pressure sprayer, foot pedal thing, that needs them. I'm sure I'm gonna use them elsewhere, but I have a bunch of those blade style connectors. I also bought an inertia switch. I need to watch some videos or do some read up. Make sure you're not supposed to mount these in any specific direction or position. If not, it's going right here next to this ground block. This ground block will be the ground for this turn relay. It'll be the ground for all these relays. And it'll probably be the ground for my tail lights and my fuel pumps and my fuel sender. And I'll branch this off to a big gauge wire that'll probably ground out to right here. I'll probably drill a hole and rip nut that. Another thing I did, put rib nuts in this. Like I said before in other videos, I don't like metal screws. So, rib nuts. Don't know if I showed it before, but transmission boot, rib nuts. Anywhere where it'd be a pain to get on the back side of to do a nut, and it would be something that will be probably removed every once in a while. This could have been regular nuts because it's not too hard to access the back side of this. But I just went ahead and did rib nuts because why not? This probably sh could have been rib nuts, but. My spray motor is just drilled with regular Teflon or Nylock quarter 20 stainless stuff. I left one of those cleaned off. I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but yeah, see how it's kind of bare. I left one of these legs clean. That will be so I can use that as a ground for anything that needs a ground over in that direction. Um, the ground for the AC unit that I'm gonna need. This will go to the upper mount, which you can't see. Well, actually you can, kinda because it's shiny. That'll be my ground for it. I tested earlier, it's good ground. My big ground for the AC will just go to my lug down here. I'm going to reroute these. Rudder had mentioned this before, that this might be a problem for my kick panel. And there's my hyper spark, if you can make it out. And you can't really, because that light. But anyways, it's right here. But anyways, these power wires and stuff, I'm gonna route up this pillar and out the top, kind of where these here are coming out. Sorry for the dim light. Something else I was gonna say. If you um, if you go the route of using Deutsch connectors along with Mavin stuff, get a good pair of crimps. These are actually Deutsch brand HGT forty eight zero zero. These crimps are amazing. These are like three hundred and fifty dollar crimps, I think, or three hundred dollar crimps. If you watch any of the high high end build videos on YouTube where they're doing some electrical work or wiring they're using these these things are amazing compared to the cheap amazon ebay knockoffs you have a gauge uh, depth for the pin you have wire gauge selection it has a lock ring so once you set your depth you can lock it and these things have heavy duty teeth and they crimp beautifully they are amazing these strippers Amazing. Get a pair. They're like 20 bucks, I think. 30 bucks, maybe. 
These are Klein. They're amazing. That iOS crimp tool or crimper that I showed you a second ago comes with these. These are your other style uh, strippers. These are actually pretty good. They cut quite nicely and they strip quite well. And they have all your gauge sizes written out. I use both depending on the situation. All right. All my wire that's running through my channel here, it'll have to be braided with some nylon brick snake skin. Also have these two white boxes here are the split style. So, I guess that's it for now. Uh, still have a lot more wiring to do. Still have a lot more work to do. So one other thing I'll discuss since I already made this video long. Part of a decision I'm pondering over due to money and time currently. You see, my headers are turned normal. I might leave these in A for the time being and get this thing running and drivable in A. As one, it's at least another thousand to probably fifteen hundred dollars to get the turbo set up just for parts, not even counting time. I have a lot more money and parts to buy. Don't have the money right now. I have a lot more time and cruising the coast is coming up quick. I think I'm like five, six months away, something like that. I have a lot of work to do before then. Babbing these headers is going to take a lot of time. A lot of time that I don't think I wanna to try to rush into getting those done before the car is even running. So it is real easy to make these headers work and drive. And what I plan on doing is just these are a two and a half exit. I have exhaust over there on my bench that is three inch. I'm gonna buy the flanges, they're 10 bucks a piece probably. Bring it down. I'm gonna buy the, the uh, size adapter to change from two and a half to three. They're gonna come down, cut out, and run along this rocker here, right behind this pinch weld and either turn down or turn out right here in front of the tire. And I'm gonna hang them off of this leaf spring perch. Since I'm not using the leaf spring anymore. And that will be my hanger. That will get me taken care of as far as driving it and get me through cruising. Because none of the interior is gonna be done before then. Most likely this car is gonna be empty shell with glass in it, no carpet, two seats. And the seats aren't even gonna match because they're you know, this color and the car is gonna be black. So I think I still have my old seat belts. They're gonna be just rocking the lap belts for the time being. Um, I don't even know if I'll have you know, my, all my interior stuff done in the back here because I think I have to modify it to work with these mini tubs. That might not even be done. So this thing's going to be obnoxiously loud, most likely. But anyways, that's it. My main focus is, like I said, get this thing running and drivable. And then I'll start modifying and upgrading and installing the stuff that's optional. Well, I say optional, but it's more looks than anything. Yeah, that's it guys. Thanks for watching. Till the next one.